Welcome back and uh, let us start with our resume of the discussion on noise and we will be looking at the uh, differential amplifier circuit active load that uh, is being used for building our op amp and uh, then we will be looking at some of the sizing uh, issues uh, related to reduction of this corner frequency 1 upon SC and uh, uh, also look into some other techniques that can be used to mitigate this 1 upon FC noise uh, which also involves trade offs with some other design matrices. So, let us look at these uh, 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 topics one by one. So, if we look at the differential amplifier operation uh, we will be looking at the differential half circuit and then we can say that uh, ultimately our uh, differential half circuit is going to be same as what we have just analyzed active load circuit. If we however, look at the common mode we have just got to take care of another transistor which is <coughs> at the uh, tail current source. So, you have m 1, m 2, m 3, m 4. For the differential case we do not have to worry about the tail current source we said this is AC ground. So, anyway we do not have contribution coming from this one. For the common mode also if you look at the two paths uh, you have some equivalent noise voltage and current because of this transistor and uh, this is going to if uh, result in an overall equivalent noise current flowing through the drain of this m 5 for the common mode. Therefore, this is the same source which is contributing to the V o n 1 and V o n 2. So, if I consider effect of only m 5 its effect acts appears like a common mode because it is a single source. So, its effect is getting divided and you are having overall noise current flowing in these two branches and coming at the output nodes over here and these are correlated because they are coming from the same source. So, uh, they uh, you can have an overall noise coming in the common mode operation because of this transistor and we are not concerned with the common mode signal so much. So, an overall common node noise uh, which is much minute as compared to the signal can be uh, relatively less significant as compared to the differential operation where it is not appearing. So, this is uh, just a small point to be noted over here. Now, if we look at say the minimization of F c, uh, if we revert back to our expression and try to see what it takes to minimize F c in order to cater to our low frequency signal. Remember we are talking about signal content which is going all the way to uh, 0.5 hertz and we need to pass up to 0.5 hertz of signal and our higher cutoff frequency uh, for the high pass response also that we designed with the respect with the help of that uh, feedback resistor R f for input DC biasing that was also supposed to pass that 0.5 hertz. So, uh, we need to ideally shift F c to 0.5 hertz if we rely only on sizing and uh, once again uh, referring back to our uh, discussion earlier if we uh, look at the uh, 1 upon f frequency that will be obtained by the ratio of these two terms. So, we just equate this and get the f at which these two are equal and that again mandates a uh, much larger L 2 value that would mandate a large I d value because in this ratio I d will be coming in the denominator term uh, and that will once again mandate a larger uh, I d value and along with that also a larger w by L 1 value. So, these are the three terms we will like to increase I d the loop of the input device that is making it larger size and likewise making the channel length of the output device or the load device much larger. These are the three quantities that we figured out in order to push this uh, 1 upon f frequency towards lower and lower values. So, we see the direct trade off with the bias current first of all and uh, uh, in our case when we are having a low power application we are talking about multiple channels you know each of them having such a dedicated front end amplifier bias current is having severe constraint and therefore, we cannot just go on reducing uh, we just cannot go on increasing the bias current to cater uh, to 1 upon f noise requirement. Likewise, the other terms if you go on increasing w 1 or the device size l 2 they are going to affect my bandwidth because they are going to increase the device parasitic capacitances and slow down my overall frequency response and uh, we need to uh, you know cater to up to at least uh, you know 100 or 1 kilohertz of uh, signal. So, uh, being conservative we would like to push the upper cutoff frequency slightly higher than the uh, signal content. So, uh, signal content is from 0 0.1 to 100 hertz we would like the upper cutoff frequency to be at least on a few hundreds of hertz to kilohertz and uh, uh, we must meet all those constraints while we are sizing these input devices and the channel length of the load device larger. So, uh, if we just rely on uh, those two uh, considerations 
we will definitely have conflict with our bandwidth requirement, we will also have conflict with our power budget that we are having for the overall amplifier. So, uh, we need to look into some other techniques through which we can possibly have a better solution for this uh, 1 upon f noise. And before we go there, we can also you know, uh, once again quickly revisit the second stage and just uh, conclude that it is noise it is not so very relevant as compared to the first stage. Therefore, we are focusing more on the first stage noise and without doing much of an analysis we know that the whatever noise is produced by the second stage I can call it V o n 2 square uh, over here ultimately magnitude point of view they are going to be same because they are symmetric devices. So, the mean square value is supposed to be same and uh, if we want to refer it to the input it gets divided by the phase first stage gain as well as second stage gain. So, V o n square if you want to uh, find its equivalent input referred noise that gets divided by g m r o by 2 whole square as a result uh, its contribution will be much lower as compared to the noise produced by the first stage. So, uh, we are concerned with minimizing the uh, noise contributed by the first stage uh, and we should just make sure that under no condition uh, the second stage noise is you know, degrading too much. That will not happen generally because of the other design constraints we are having the w by l and the bias current in the second stage also comparable to the first stage. So, we can um, uh, you know try to save some power dissipation by allowing lower bias current in the second stage because it is not so noise critical. Uh, so, we can certainly take the advantage of this relaxation in uh, achieving some advantage in the second stage by uh, having more relaxed constraint on w by l and bias current. So, we are uh, mostly focusing on the first stage for this determination of 1 upon f noise or minimization of the 1 upon f noise through the technique which we are going to discuss next. So, the uh, technique that is commonly used for Minima, uh, mitigating the effect of this 1 upon f noise is chopper stabilization, where we uh, have an input signal which is uh, which may be lying at very low frequencies. Uh, so, for example, in our case as we have said the content of the signal may be peaking at uh, close to you know few tens of hertz and it can have content going all the way to 0.5 hertz. So, it can be having some content very close to DC also and therefore, if I look at the complex frequency spectrum it will look like this you have the positive and the negative frequency component um, in the complex frequency domain coming in. And so, this is the overall signal spectrum centered around omega equal to 0 and I under this condition I also have at present the 1 upon f noise which is uh, which can be very sharply overlapping with this even if you are designing it uh, even if you are designing it. Uh, very carefully trying to push 1 upon f noise further and further. We said that up to 10 hertz it may be feasible, but beyond that it becomes difficult. So, definitely we would like to uh, save our signals from this increasing 1 upon f noise which can uh, significantly corrupt or completely destroy our signal content at least those which is closer to lower frequency closer to DC. And uh, to do that uh, the technique uses chopping where we uh, multiply the input signal coming to the uh, amplifier with a high frequency uh, clock signal. So, uh, schematically you can represent it as uh, a multiplication operation where you are having the input signal getting multiplied by plus minus 1 uh, sorry plus minus 1 and as a, as a result the overall frequency spectrum of the input signal will be getting shifted by the frequency harmonics of the square pulse. So, we know that the square pulse is going to have um, harmonics at the fundamental frequency of this square and also the higher harmonics. So, I can represent this as um, a 1 cos omega 1 t plus a 2 um, cos omega uh, 2 omega 1 t and so on. In omega t and so on. So, th we can expand it in the form of its Fourier series and uh, we can look at the coefficients and when we multiply this entire uh, quantity by the input signal call it V i n t which is having some spectrum. So, this entire frequency spectrum of V i n t will be shifted to these higher harmonics and the fundamental harmonics of the square pulse. So, if I assume that this V n t is having um, 
some frequency content, all these frequency content ranging from say uh, 0 to a certain frequency uh, call it omega bandwidth will be shifted to this omega 1 and the higher harmonics of that. And therefore, I can represent my shifted signals as the magnitudes will be uh, you know reduced as because of coefficients of the expansion will be diminishing as we go towards higher frequencies. So, let me you know uh, draw it a little bit, uh, let me um, this is supposed to be you know uh, let me draw it afresh. So, I just drew it equal magnitude. So, the shifted ones should be having lower magnitude. So, you had the original signal over here, the so signal shifted to f 1 f 2 having for the lower magnitude and so on. So, this is the spectrum we are going to get after the multiplication of the signal with the square pulse and then after the amplifier we can once again go back with the reverse process. We can once again multiply it by the same frequency and if the amplifier is having its bandwidth which is you know limited it will definitely uh, reject the higher frequencies harmonics coming into picture. So, we know that ultimately our amplifier is going to have some band limitation and we make sure that it is you know sufficiently uh, lower than f 2. So, we can ignore the higher harmonics coming into picture and uh, assume that they will be diminished. We can also have a dedicated low pass filter which is anyway going to um, suppress this. So, uh, in order to uh, completely eliminate this in some cases people may put a dedicated low pass filter stage. If the um, cutoff provided by this amplifier is not sufficiently low or it is not guaranteed to be low and sharp enough, we can also incorporate a low pass filter over here before we go for the anti chopping process. So, uh, at this stage basically what we are expecting is we are uh, left with only the uh, f 1 component, the component of the signal shifted to f 1 frequency. and. Uh, And also, we have at this point the 1 upon f noise still sitting at the low value. So, I am drawing the signal v x over here. So, this is uh, let me call it v x. The node v x is having the 1 upon f noise spectrum still over here because uh, just at the output of the amplifier, the 1 upon f noise spectrum will be as given by the original amplifier. However, the signal has been shifted towards higher frequency because of multiplication with f 1 and the higher harmonics have been rejected because of the low pass filter characteristics of the amplifier or presence of a dedicated low pass filter just after the amplifier. And now, once again if I multiply this signal back with the same frequency, once again you will have this uh, entire spectrum of the signal sitting at f 1 shifting back to the uh, lower frequency or the uh, omega equal to 0 frequency. So, once again if I multiply this with uh, the square pulse, the final signal that we get over here is once again going to come back to omega equal to 0, because uh, the signal centered around uh, omega 1 multiplied by cos omega 1 t once again is going to result in the DC component and signals in the vicinity of omega 1 accordingly get shifted towards the frequencies in the vicinity of omega equal to 0. So, we get back our uh, desired signal. However, if I talk about the 1 upon f noise spectrum, what happens to that after the point? Let me call this v y. So, what happens to the 1 upon f noise spectrum at v y? So, before the anti chopping switch, this is called anti chopping switch, this is the chopping switch. So, here we did the chopping, we multiplied this frequency with this chopper, which is plus minus operation. And uh, after that, we are having the anti chopping, where we are again multiplying the signal with the same frequency and shifting the signal back to the original spectrum. And if I look at the 1 upon f noise spectrum, however, that was sitting over here at the base band or low frequency, it was uh, going much sharp. Uh, going much higher at uh, lower frequencies, but now I have basically shifted this 1 upon f noise to f 1 after the anti chopping operation, because for the 1 upon f noise over here this is acting like the chopping operation. Therefore, this gets shifted to f 1 
and my desired signal is back at lower frequency. So, basically I have been able to separate out my 1 upon f noise component with the desired frequency component and hence mitigate the effect of this uh, you know sharply increasing 1 upon f noise component at the uh, low frequency which was interfering with my data. Now, if I assume that the signal has been sufficiently magnified. So, you also have this magnitude which is you know a times the input magnitude which is going to be significantly higher and therefore, the 1 upon f noise or the, the uh, thermal noise of the subsequent stages may not be so significant as compared to the signal over here. Um, so, this is uh, the uh, one of the ways in which we can uh, mitigate the effect of uh, 1 upon f noise. Now, if you look at uh, there are this is the ideal picture there are of course, some issues related with this 1 upon f noise uh, uh, cancellation and chopping as well um, and that is going to help us in determining how to choose these frequencies the, the, the chopping frequencies and what are the trade offs in choosing the chopping frequencies appropriately. So, let us first look at the choice of chopping frequency what should be the chopping frequency. So, uh, one of the criteria that we always have is this 1 upon f noise corner and uh, we would like our signal to be uh, sufficiently higher than this 1 upon f noise corner. So, that it is not affecting our signal. So, definitely the obvious answer at the first hand will be that it should be sufficiently higher than this corner frequency. So, that after the anti chopping process uh, the uh, the signal is sufficiently higher than this 1 upon f noise and again when I am turning it back it is uh, the desired signal is coming back and the um, the 1 upon f noise spectrum is shifted to a much higher frequency given by the chopping frequency f 1. So, in general uh, the choice of f 1 is at least 3 to 4 times this corner frequency. So, if your corner frequency is 10 hertz I would like to um, keep this f 1 at least uh, 4 or 5 times that f uh, the corner frequency. So, uh, a safer limit is 10 times. So, that you can have an order of magnitude difference between the corner frequency and the uh, uh, center frequency of the shifted signal and of course, it depends about the bandwidth also. So, here we are assuming that the bandwidth of the signal is sufficiently lower than f 1 if it is comparable then once again you will have to take the limit on the lower side and say that this uh, f 1 minus the bandwidth of the signal should be sufficiently higher than the uh, corner frequency. But if I assume that the f 1 is sufficiently higher uh, than the signal bandwidth then we can ignore this bandwidth as compared to f 1 and just make sure that f 1 is sufficiently higher than the corner frequency. Uh, also uh, ideally since this is a you know 1 upon f noise curve. So, here we are de depicting it with a very sharp characteristics that okay, there is a transition sharp transition between the 1 upon f curve and the white curve. So, we are depicting it something like this, but uh, in the actual scenario of course, this is a 1 upon f curve which is going to have you know smooth decay and then you have the you know, white noise which is flat overall. So, if we go higher and higher towards uh, uh, for the chopping frequency definitely the effect of this 1 upon f noise will become dim, uh, will be diminished more stronger. So, crudely we can say that okay, 1 upon f noise corner frequency is the deciding point. If we make sure that the f 1 to which we are shifting the spectrum is sufficiently higher as compared to the 1 upon f corner it seems like okay, we can get a sufficiently good input referred noise we are able to mitigate this 1 upon f noise, but if you are more greedy if you want to be even uh, uh, better in terms of the 1 upon f noise or overall input referred noise uh, we would like to push the signal as far as possible. So, that even the tail effect of this 1 upon f noise is not coming up and it is not affecting the signal because remember when you are talking about high precision signal uh, when you are talking about 10 bit 11 bit further higher 16 bit of precision even this tail effect of noise which is increasing your overall noise can be important to address and we would not like to have even this tail effect corrupting our signal. So, uh, we would like to take maximum possible advantage of the chopping and try to shift the signal frequency even higher th by applying a much stronger uh, much higher chopper, uh, chopper frequency. So, that my signal after chopping is sitting far away from this 1 upon f corner and also by that chopping frequency f 1 the <coughs> tail effect of this 1 upon f 
frequency has also diminished significantly uh, or in other words suppose the white noise level is given by um, v n w if this um, this uh, 1 upon f spectrum has fallen 1 upon 10 times of that till this point we would be you know, having a safer limit we would say that the contribution of this 1 upon f noise is now 10 times lower than the white noise therefore it is not very significant now um, so if you want to be more aggressive and uh, uh, save as much uh, signal integrity as possible you would like to push this 1 upon uh, sorry you would like to push this chopper frequency as high as possible so that this trailing part of the 1 upon f noise is also not having significant effect um, so Analytically, it can be shown that uh, the overall uh, contribution of the 1 upon f noise is significantly lowered if the f 1 is an order of magnitude higher than the corner frequency. So, if you make f 1 uh, approximately 10 times of the f c, uh, the contribution of this tail of 1 upon f noise spectrum uh, is uh, falls significantly lower than the white noise and then uh, you are having a uh, maximum or the uh, signal to noise ratio almost saturating. So, if I uh, plot the signal to noise ratio versus frequency, it will go on improving till this point. So, uh, if I if I plot the SNR, it will be very bad in the initial phase and after that it will go on improving uh, and after a certain point it will saturate. So, I would like to go to that saturation point beyond that if you increase the chopping frequency further and further because this has anyway died down the tail of this 1 upon f has anyway died down it will not have significant advantage. So, um, if I want to increase this further means I am not going to get significant advantage in the S n R of the circuit and therefore, um, I would like to stop over there. Why I would like to stop over there? Because once again what does a larger chopping frequency require? So, if I am trying to impose larger and larger chopping frequency to push my signal spectrum much away from this 1 upon f and much further away from the, the tail of this 1 upon f, I am enforcing larger clock frequency on this two multipliers and along with that I am also having a constraint on the bandwidth of this amplifier because in absence of the chopper the bandwidth of the amplifier was just supposed to cater to the input signal, but now the bandwidth of the amplifier must cater to this shifted signal f 1 plus b. So, now if this is the bandwidth of the signal f 1 plus b is the uh, required bandwidth of the amplifier and therefore, the uh, the amplifier now need to cater to this higher speed or faster signal and hence its bandwidth must be so much high. And we know that if the bandwidth is supposed to be higher, uh, we are going to have again constraints uh, conflicting constraint coming from the gain side. Um, you have the thermal noise also which, are, which is going to be impacted if you are trying to increase the bandwidth. So, larger uh, chopping frequency necessitates higher bandwidth of this amplifier earlier it was operating in the base band and the uh, signal content was within 100 hertz. So, we would happy with even 100 hertz bandwidth, but now if I am operating with a uh, few kilohertz of chopping frequency the cutoff frequency of this amplifier has to be few kilohertz um, and along with uh, that you are going to have the constraint with the gain. So, you are increasing the bandwidth the gain will be um, difficult to maintain as a result you will have to once again um, uh, take care of the precision consideration uh, try to maintain the gain at the required value by uh, looking at other trade offs like sizing etcetera. So, for example, if you are trying to increase the um, uh, you are trying to increase the cutoff frequency by say uh, increasing the bias current that will going to uh, reduce your RO and hence increase the uh, bandwidth of this circuit at the same time it is also going to reduce your open loop gain. Otherwise, uh, likewise you have other scenarios as well where you are having um, the compensation uh, with the help of CC there also you may need to um, relax the uh, compensation capacitor value and uh, that is going to you know exchange or uh, trade off with your uh, phase margin. So, uh, if we try to go for larger and larger chopping frequency it has negative impact on the uh, overall gain open loop gain of this amplifier that you can achieve and once again you need to make sure that at uh, this frequency while satisfying the bandwidth requirement it is able to meet your stability criteria it is able to meet your phase margin. So, both of these are getting tightly coupled. Um, the other issue that also needs to be taken care of is the you know uh, optimization of the white noise and the uh, 1 upon f noise together. So, the white noise can also be pushed down if you uh, use appropriate sizing constraint the 
uh, white noise can also be pushed down further and further, so that uh, your overall noise integrated over the signal bandwidth is lower. For example, after uh, the anti chopping operation, when you are pushing the signal back at this frequency there, once again the 1 upon uh, f noise is not coming into picture, but the white noise indeed is coming into picture and that is uh, once again aligned with your signal content. Not only this, if you see after the anti chopping process, you also have the higher harmonics of this clock signal coming at this point. right? So, you have uh, not only f 1, but the higher harmonics of f 1 multiplying this 1 upon f noise spectrum. Therefore, this uh, uh, this white noise that was present at all the uh, higher frequencies, because it is you know continuous and it is going to be present at even higher frequencies. So, it is also going to have you know spectrum uh, close to say 2 f 1 and 3 f 1 and so on. And now, when you are multiplying this 2 f 1 component with this f 1, definitely this the noise white noise component in this interval is also going to get shifted back and come to this level. As a result, you will have the white noise contribution piling up, because of the higher harmonics of this chopping signal as well. Therefore, it is important to minimize the white noise component as well. It is not just the 1 upon f, but the white noise floor also needs to be minimized. So, that when you are applying this anti chopping process and bringing the you know white noise components associated or uh, located close to this higher harmonics say 2 f 1, 3 f 1, 4 f 1 back to the uh, lower frequency omega equal to 0, you are once again increasing the white noise floor close to the signal level and that can start corrupting your data. And therefore, uh, uh, minimization of the white noise floor also becomes important. And uh, for that once again we have to uh, look at the overall you know expression that we have for the white noise component, uh, which is dependent upon the g m of the input device w by l of the input device uh, and uh, primarily if I look at the uh, first two component, it is the bias current of the input device and the w of the input device that needs to be uh, sized up. So, once again this constraint needs to be uh, followed, you need to make sure that the white noise contribution coming from the first two sources, they are also sufficiently diminished. So, that uh, when you are applying the anti chopping process, the overall level does not really uh, you know go up and degrade the signal to noise ratio. In general, if you are having an overall low path filtering operations, so that after a certain point, uh, the noise contributions are getting diminished. So, in that case, uh, the uh, the higher harmonics of this clock signals, which are anyway diminishing in amplitude. So, you have f 1, 2 f 1, uh, 3 f 1. So, these are the guys, which are bringing my white noise uh, back to the uh, low frequency and superimposing on the DC. So, of course, as we go towards higher and higher harmonics, their amplitude also diminishes. So, it is a convergent series, it is not going to diverge. And uh, b apart from that, you also have some low pass filtering effect in the circuit, which is going to diminish the components at higher frequencies. But still, this uh, series converging towards uh, finite value over here, we need to minimize that finite value, so that uh, we can maintain a good uh, signal to noise ratio. So, that sizing constraint also needs to be take care of, taken care of. Now, this effect is termed as, termed as noise folding, where you are folding the high frequency uh, white noise back to the uh, base band and which is now overlapping with your desired signal. So, this mandates lowering of white noise also to uh, uh, as low value as possible. And, uh, uh, we have to take care of both these together, white noise as well as the 1 upon f noise. So, so in some of the simulation examples also, we will be looking at this sizing problems, how to you know co-optimize uh, this combination. So, you have the choice of 1 upon f corner frequency, you have the choice of the chopping frequency dependent upon that, the moment you go for higher chopping frequency, you have uh, power dissipation increasing, bandwidth uh, requirement increasing and then you also have to make sure that the uh, white noise spectrum is sufficiently low. So, that once you are anti chopping, it is not folding back sufficient noise, this folded back noise is also limited. So, all those constraints needs to be addressed while uh, designing the uh, chopping for mitigation of low uh, frequency noise. Sir, is uh, clock frequency, clock signal is 0 to VDD or minus VDD by 2 to plus? Clock signal can be just 0 to VDD. So, because here I have on the single ended versions, as I have discussed earlier also in some of the other examples, ultimately the signal is differential and you can have 
uh, switch which is uh, applying the differential signal to the positive and negative terminals of the amplifier in turn. So, if I look at the phases, this will be the phase 1 during phase 1 the up input signal v, v in plus and uh, v in minus they are coming to say v plus and v minus of the amplifier and during the phase 2 which basically is these two switches. Uh, let me draw it phase 2 and this is also phase 2. So, during phase 2 these two uh, these two switches are on as a result v i plus goes to the negative input of the amplifier v i minus goes to the positive input of the amplifier and effectively it is multiplying it by plus minus 1. So, that is the way plus minus 1 implementation is done it is not that the clock signal has to be plus minus 1. Uh, you when you multiply with uh, that signal not only f 1 f 2 f 3 it has some DC component also. In this case you do not have DC component because you are multiplying with plus minus 1. So, here the signal V in plus and V i minus that is at one time it is applied directly to the plus and minus signal of the or plus and minus input of the amplifier. So, this entire V i plus V i minus appears over here plus minus and in the phi 2 phase the, the these cross switches are on in the phi 2 phase. So, V i plus is connected here and V i minus is connected here as a result it effectively means you are multiplying the signal by plus minus 1 because in one stage it will be multiplied by the gain. Uh, suppose the gain is r 2 by r 1 or c 2 by c 1. So, in first phase phi 1 it is getting a gain of minus c 2 by c 1 in the other case signal is getting a gain of plus c 2 by c 1. So, effectively that is how you are multiplying it by plus minus 1. So, why noise spectrum also shift means here the noise spectrum is multiplied and then it is uh, means multiplied that uh, means added to the signal and then it is come out uh, at output node. But here uh, you draw that after anti chopping the noise spectrum come at f 1. So, can you know, this what is happening? No, so, the noise spectrum here uh, to begin with the 1 upon f noise was at uh, you know low frequency peaking at omega equal to 0 and then you multiply it with f 1 this was the noise spectrum at this point you are getting the noise of the amplifier 1 upon f noise peaking at low frequency when this gets, gets multiplied by this chopping frequency it goes towards uh, you know the f 1 and higher harmonics of f and the signal frequency which was sitting at f 1 it comes back. Then after we, uh, we apply low pass filter. Low pass filter amplifier itself having its inbuilt low pass filter which will suppress. So, you may not uh, you know need a dedicated low pass filter, but amplifier itself will have or you know subsequent filtering stages anyway you will have aliasing filter. So, they will anyway have such a cut off frequency because only the amplifier bandwidth is high because you are processing. Uh, the chopped signal which is at high frequency the amplifier bandwidth is supposed to be high, but after that the uh, low pass filter etcetera and anti aliasing filter that we have or the subsequent amplifier stage that you will have even after that as I said you will need another amplifier stage which is probably going to be a variable gain amplifier whose gain need to be controlled in an automated fashion. So, uh, that itself will not require chopping and uh, its bandwidth will be much lower. So, or low pass filtering will be inbuilt in the circuit stages subsequent to this also and uh, beyond that you anyway have the low pass filter ok. So, um, we can uh, close our discussion here and in the next section uh, firstly we are going to look into some other examples where um, uh, the noise uh, constraints will be different. Uh, we will see that in the cascode coded cascode example also we will be looking at the noise analysis, frequency analysis, stability analysis and how it is very different from this case. Uh, now, we have the uh, steps for arriving at sizing. So, now given a specification higher level specification of the amplifier that we have started with in the beginning uh, using all this information of noise analysis, frequency analysis, um, stability, gain requirement, bandwidth requirement using all this analysis uh, we can arrive at transistor level uh, design. We can estimate what should be the required transistor designs or transistor sizes for a front end amplifier. Uh, some of the things that we have already studied in our earlier courses is the uh, signal swing, the input common mode range, um, the overall uh, you know output common mode range. So, they also act like important parameters. So, combining what we have studied like the noise and the stability along with the other parameters that come in like the uh, input and output signal range um, and some other important issues like CMRR, PSRR that we have not dealt with uh, so far all these so many issues combined together uh, help us determining the sizing required for the transistors. So, some 
uh, some uh, features or some uh, specifications may be important, some other specifications may not be important. Like, if I am talking about the uh, front end amplifier, their um, input common mode range will not be very important or input signal range will not be very important, because the input signal is very small in quantity. Likewise, uh, there is an important quantity called slew rate for the amplifier, uh, which deals with large signal operation at the output stage. If the input signal is changing fast and by a larger magnitude, the amplifier slews and the output uh, uh, state transition is determined by the bias current and the load capacitance. So, slew rate happens when the input signal is changing fast and getting amplified by large amounts so that the output has to swing you know very fast. One of the input devices becomes completely off and the other one becomes completely on. So, that is the extreme case of the differential amplifier. The slew rate also appears as one of the important specifications for the amplifier or the op amp. So, for the front end amplifier once again slew rate may not be so critical, because the front end amplifier the very first stage is not uh, introducing so much of slew, because the ampli voltage amplified after the first stage is also pretty small in magnitude. So, at the max you are having few hundreds of gain and the input magnitude is uh, you know uh, 10 micro volt. So, you are still within maybe few millivolts after the first stage. So, you may not so much worry about the slew rate of the first stage amplifier also, whereas noise constraint becomes very important for the first stage. So, noise is going to play a heavy role in determining the sizing of the transistors, the W bile of the transistor, bias current of the transistor. Likewise, uh, the uh, the chopping constraint and the bandwidth is going to be very critical for the first stage amplifier. For the subsequent stage like the, um, the variable gain amplifier, which is taking the amplified signal, the noise constraint will be relatively relaxed. You may not be employing chopping over there. So, the bandwidth constraint will be relaxed, but it will be amplifying the signal to a large magnitude and therefore, the slew rate and the output signal swing can be important. Input signal swing may not still may not be so critical. If you go deeper into the chain, the filter, uh, they are receiving a fully processed or magnified signal, which is at least maybe uh, few tens of millivolt, 100 millivolt, and therefore, there uh, the input signal range will also become very critical. So, depending on where you are in the stage, noise or swing, uh, one of these two will be more critical. Likewise, uh, the other parameters like you know the input signal range and output common mode range, uh, the uh, the bandwidth of the circuit uh, and uh, some other specification like CMRR, PSR, they will also become important. So, as you are in the uh, earlier stage of the circuit, as we said that the CMRR and PSRR, they are going to be very crucial, because even a small mismatch between the transistor pair can lead to propagation of any noise in the supply to the differential signal. So, any common mode noise, which is appearing uh, from the VDD or the ground sources, they can completely overwhelm your differential signal that you are having at the output. So, these are another uh, other important uh, specification that we may need to take care of. So, we can see that there are so many specifications and based on those we need to arrive at the uh, transistor sizing and you know block level implementations while meeting our target specs at different uh, blocks or different stages in our old signal processing chain. And whatever we do here, whatever baseline analysis we do here it applies to any other general application or any other architecture that we are building. So, here we are discussing a baseline uh, design going down uh, from the highest level specification down to you know all the different kinds of analysis uh, and finally, arriving at the bottom line transistor level design. And whatever we do here applies uh, in a similar fashion to other topologies, the concepts remain very much similar. So, probably we will take another parallel example, where uh, some ampli other amplifier topologies will be taken up and the similar concepts will be applied to show you another variation, another taste of similar analysis or similar approaches. So, that you are comfortable with uh, uh, applying the similar strategy for any other design that you may take up.